five pieces of bad business advice that everyone is falling for. There is a lot of business advice out there. Some of it's good, some of it is absolute garbage. But when you're first starting out, you don't know what business advice is gonna make you cash or what needs to be thrown in the trash. Today we're playing Cash or Trash, a game show where we determine if business advice is cash or trash. We are your hosts, Jenny and Davis. We turned a small woodworking business in our garage into a $50,000 business in a small rural town. Then we moved to Houston and sold another $30,000 of furniture before we finally transitioned to just cutting and charcuterie boards. And all in all, we've made about half a million dollars selling what we make. And today we're gonna give you our opinion on the most popular pieces of business advice by playing cash or trash. All right, Jenny, are you ready for the uh, first piece of business advice? I'm so ready. The first piece of business advice. The customer is always right. Those of you playing along at home, let us know in the comments. Cash or trash? Is the customer always right? Oh, you said trash. I did. You okay. said cash? Yeah, yeah. Why why is that trash, Jenny? Okay. I I get where it's coming from. The customer is always right. You want to always want to make your customer feel like they're right. But I think the key word there is you want to make your customers feel like they're right. They're not always right because the customer doesn't always know what they want especially when you have a specialty that they don't know much about like for example the people we sell to don't really know anything about woodworking at all they just think our boards are pretty and so they'll ask for things like can you stain the board can you stain it this dark chocolatey brown color but i know with my expertise that you don't put stain on cutting boards like you put food on cutting stain boards stain is toxic stain is to toxic and so you know if the customer were always right I would say oh yeah for sure I can put stain on it but they're not right I know a little bit more than they do in that situation I'm not gonna tell them to their face that they're wrong I'm just gonna say hey for your health for your safety we don't stain any of our boards they're all natural hardwoods with food safe finishes on them and yeah just because of situations like that I feel like the customer isn't technically always right you can make them feel like they're always right. I like your caveat of the feel like they're always right. Mm -hmm. I think that more accurately describes the, the saying, but obviously that's not as catchy. I um, know. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I said this is cash because for a long time I wanted to sell what I wanted to make. I drove a web design business into the ground because I would not build what the customer wanted. I built the website I thought they should have and then tried to sell it to them and cram it down their throats. That ain't how business works. So I say cash because that was a lesson I had to learn the hard way of give the customer what they want. Mm -hmm. Figure out a way to make them happy with what it is that you want to make. So yeah, I say okay. cash. Okay. You say trash. I could see yours as well. <sighs> That's a hard one. We're not allowed to agree. I this know. This is a game show. We have to disagree <laughs> and yell and scream. Yeah. Okay. The next piece of business advice. We'll see if we're divided on this one or if we agree. What's it going to be? Cash or trash? Start before you're ready. Cash. Immediately. All day. All 100% day. cash. Do not. You, you don't know what you don't know. And you're not going to learn it until you get out there and try. So yep. if you're thinking about selling what you make, if you want to try it, start an Etsy store. Upload your first product. Get it going. Talk to people. Tell people you have a business before you even have a website or a business card made. Get going because the faster you can change things and tweak it and move forward, the more money that you're going to make. So do it yep. ugly. Start fast. Get going before you're ready. Yes. We are t terrible, notorious overthinkers. And looking back, like after starting our businesses, gosh, I wish we would have started sooner. I wish we would have made mistakes sooner. I wish we would have failed sooner because then we could have started on what actually works so much sooner than we actually did. All right, are you ready for the next one? Yes. Okay, next piece of business advice. Make a good enough product and it will sell itself. Make a good enough product and it will sell itself. Trash. trash. We both agree on this. We, uh, why yes. Do you, why do you think that's trash? Because how many times, I don't know if you guys in the audience have experienced this, but how many times have you built something and thought that everybody was just gonna want it? You're like, I build this one thing, I think it's beautiful, the whole world must want this thing. And then you put it up on Facebook Marketplace or Etsy or on your website and crickets. And then you're sitting there wondering, is my, is my product just, bad? Is it inherently bad? 
And the answer is no, it's just nobody knows about it. Just because you built it and it looks really pretty doesn't mean that people are gonna come flocking to it. Yeah, the, the quality of your product and getting it known in the marketplace are two totally separate things. You can have the world's best product, but if nobody knows about it, you're not going to sell any. On the other hand, if you have a terrible product, but everybody knows about it, you're going to make money. Like, you can make a ton of money with a bad product, and a lot of people, in, in my opinion, don't do it the most ethical way, but a lot of people make a lot of money with a bad product, but they just spend a lot of money on their marketing and advertising campaigns. So yeah. it's on us, those of us that make a good product, to be even louder about it. Yes. So I, I don't like this piece of advice. Uh, I ran our business thinking this for a long time until I took responsibility for sale. You can go watch the whole journey. You guys know, you've watched our channel, but like that's been my whole journey of learning how to run a business is that the product and the promotion of the product are two separate things and you probably should spend more time promoting the product than you should developing the product. So anyway, I'm rambling. What is the next piece of business advice, Jenny? Give your customers lots of options. Uh, I'm, I don't know, eh, I'll, go, I'll go with this for now. I'm, I'm sticking, I'm going with trash. But I've got a caveat. Why is it good business advice to give your customers lots of options? Because I think they need lots of perceived options. I don't think they need real options, but they need to feel like they have lots of options. For example, we did not want to build charcuterie boards for a long time. We just wanted to do cutting boards. But as soon as we gave our customers the option between cutting and charcuterie boards, our sales really went up and people loved it. For both. For both boards. That increased the sales for both boards. Um, just because the customer felt like they had options and giving like the personalization options. Not too many that it overwhelms us, not too many that we can't have a process for it, but just enough to make them feel like they have a choice. We've also done this in the past with like stain colors. When we used to do custom furniture, we'd say, hey, here are your four options for stain colors or here are your three options. The customer felt valued because they could choose between light, dark, black, white, but we weren't giving them 27 different choices to overwhelm us. Well, that's why I said trash is because okay. most people yeah. that get this advice, bear with me for a second. Most people who make and sell things are creative people by nature. Creative people tend to want more options, more flexibility, mm -hmm. more variability than the average person does. So if you tell a creative person who likes options to offer more options, they're going to offer too many options. I'm true. guilty of this myself. Yep. They're going to offer too many options and your customer is going to be frozen with an inability to make a decision. If they have to choose between 27 different stain colors on your website, they're never going to go to checkout. But if they pick between three or four, like Jenny's saying, you're going to have a much better success. So uh, be careful with this one. I, I feel a little too strong calling it trash, but I know I'm talking to creative people here. You yeah. guys are really smart. You know what I mean? I feel like the majority of us in the makerspace probably do need to limit the amount of options we give because I feel like we yeah. have a tendency to give too many. So give a couple, but not too many. All right, Jenny, this piece of business advice is everywhere. This is probably like the number, I didn't know anything about I started a business, but I knew to do this. <laughs> when you're first starting a business, you should write a business plan, cash or trash. Yep. Yep. We're in full agreement here. Uh, yes. Why do you think it's a good idea to write a business plan? So when you have a business plan, it forces you to think about what you want out of the business. What is your goal? What are you even going to use the money for once you get the money? Are you going to invest it back in the business? Do you want to take your family on a vacation? Do you want to be able to quit your full-time job? Why are you even doing this whole thing? Because starting a business is really hard and time-consuming and sometimes lonely. So it's really good to sit back and figure out, one, why am I doing this? Two, what are my goals with the business? What do I want to build? Um, what type of people do I want to help? What problems do I want to solve? All of that is really good to figure out up front because otherwise, Otherwise, you're going to be six months to a year in running this business and you yourself are going to be a little confused about what the purpose is and where you're going. And then you're going to have to do a hard pivot to completely change your business because you didn't plan it out in the beginning. Yeah. Business plans are can be as complicated or as simple as you want them to be. Yeah. Um, I advocate for a very simple business plan when you first start out. Just try to hit an easy target, something so, where the bar is so low that you think you can meet it easily. Like, mm -hmm. hey, I just want to make, I just want to make $20. I just want to make profit of $20. And then when you reach that goal, okay, 
maybe maybe try $100 next time. And you slowly increase your goals of your business plan until you know, you're setting business goals like, oh, I want to take the family on a vacation and I want the patio furniture I build or the picnic tables I build to pay for it. Then you can, you know, snowball that into a bigger, bigger goal. But when you're first starting out, I would just say set a low threshold for you to want to achieve and to achieve it as fast as you can. And then if you liked it, if you enjoyed it, set your next goal. Yeah. So your business plan is always under construction. You don't write it once and then expect it to be the same it 10 years later. It moves and grows with you. The business plan should not look the same the first year versus, you know, the fifth or sixth year. And that's okay. But yeah, I think definitely what Jenny's saying is, is right. You've got to have a goal. you got to know why you're doing it. Otherwise, you're going to get discouraged, lost, confused, and... Uh, yeah, that's no fun. We want more friends to do this for longer. So yes. uh, set a goal, hit it, and set a bigger goal next time. These signs are so fun. <laughs> you did such a good job making these Thank signs. Thank you. Cash trash. Cash trash. Cash trash. Cash, 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 cash. Um, cash, 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 cash. Trash, 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 trash. Sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. So this one we've heard a lot in many different forms. And it is, you should price low at first and then raise your prices as you get more experience. What do you think? What are we thinking? Yeah. Trash. Trash. I feel bad saying trash because I, I don't want to be mad at whoever whoever told you to do this. I'm so sorry if somebody has given you this piece of advice. It sounds really attractive when you first hear it and it helps build your confidence up a little bit. Because you're nervous and a lot of us are scared to take money at the beginning. But I think in the long term, this is really bad advice. While pricing low at the beginning might make you feel really good and more comfortable with selling your products, you're going to hit a point where You've got the experience and you want to charge more and raise your prices, but that's going to be so difficult for you. In the maker community, we just as a whole don't value our skill set enough. We do it for fun and we think that fun is a form of payment and it's not. When you're in the business world, people are going to try and take every last dollar away from you that they can. That's just part of running a business. And if you're pricing low at first, you might think that you're building your confidence, but what you're really doing is you're setting an expectation for your customers that you're going to solve problems at a price that you can't sustain. If you're not pricing profitably from the very beginning, in a way you're sort of not telling the full truth to your customers because you can't actually solve the problem your product solves for the price that you're advertising. A fair price goes both ways. If you're not getting paid some kind of a profit, then that's not a business, that's a charity. And that's not fair to you. So you want a fair price to your customer where you can solve their problem for a certain amount of money and then on the back end, you get paid a little bit so that you can sustainably keep solving that problem for them for years and years to come because you're making enough of a product to keep the business alive and to keep your personal finances afloat. You want to find the customers that see the value in your work. And price is how we do that. So if a lot of people are turning their nose up at your high price, that just means you have to find a different customer. It means that your product isn't solving a problem that's painful enough for them. So go find the people that it does solve a problem for, and they'll be glad and happy to fork over full price for you to solve their problem. So start with a profitable price from the very beginning. If you want help and want to know where to start, we have a free pricing calculator on our website. You can go to jennydavis.com slash pricemywork, all one word, and you can use our free pricing calculator, and that'll help you know how to get started. All right, Jenny, close your eyes. Think for a moment, you're a brand new baby business owner and someone tells you, you should get as much feedback as you possibly can about everything. Your prices, your products, what you make, your business name, everything. Should you take advice from everybody? That's hard. That one's really hard. That one's really hard. <sighs> what are you going with? No. Ugh. I haven't decided yet. Um, All right, I've made my decision. You've made your decision? Yep. Three, two, one. Ooh, okay. I'm not super happy about it. Okay, well then can I go first? Yes. Okay. I don't think you should take business advice from everybody that you possibly can. I think that there's too much advice out there. When you start a business, you are going to get advice thrown at you from everyone, from your mom, to your sister, to the guy across town, to some guy that is never going to spend a dime with you, no matter what you make and sell. <laughs> so true. He's going to give you an opinion on what you should do. And I don't think you should listen to any, I think you should tune 
all of it out. You should get problem solving advice from your customer because that's the whole point of what your business is. You're solving a product for the customer. So figure out what problem you're gonna solve from the customer. And number two, if you're gonna get business advice, you need to get business advice from somebody who's doing almost exactly what it is that you're gonna be doing. If you're taking advice off of YouTube or TikTok or wherever, you better make dang sure that they are doing exactly what they're giving advice for. If you wanna start a woodworking business, you need to be listening to someone who has run and operated a woodworking business. Not someone who does a really good job of, of clickbait, but of someone who is actually running the type of business that you want to run. You can ask around, you can talk to people in your community. There's networking groups. You can join the Chamber of Commerce in your city. That's an amazing resource if you wanna meet other business owners in your area, and they are more than willing to share with you the secrets to success. So it's my opinion that it's trash advice to, to get advice from everybody. You should very specifically look at where you're getting your advice from and pre-deciding who you will and won't take advice from. What about you, Jenny? Why do you think it's good advice? So I took it more from like the feedback point of view. So when you say you should get feedback from people when you can, mm -hmm. I guess I think of feedback as somebody who has gotten your product, who has tried your product, you know, they got to take it for a test drive and listening to them. So I guess I didn't so much take it as like feedback from everybody, because I agree. If you take feedback from absolutely everybody, there's no way that all of that is gonna be good advice. There's just no way, especially if they've never run a business like you wanna run in the past. Um, but I do think it's important to listen pe to people who have seen and used your product before. So I know a lot of us, when we start a business, it's our baby. Our product is our baby. Nobody can do it right except for us. We want to be the person who does everything. We have a hard time handing things off. And so sometimes it can be really hard to hear people give us feedback about it. You know, if let's say you get an email from somebody who bought something from you and they say, hey, you know, it was really nice, but like the shipping turnaround was really slow. I had to wait three weeks to get this from you. I bought it at the beginning of the month. I didn't even get it till the end of the month. Instead of, you know, wanting to come back and say, well, that's because it's way too expensive to send it right away and it takes me forever to make. And maybe you should think, hey, maybe they're right. Is there a way that I could possibly fulfill these orders faster or ship them faster? Or maybe like you don't have enough color options or whatever it may be. I do think it's important to take feedback from people who have used and tested your product because that's how you're going to do better and sell more faster. The faster you can solve problems, the faster you can start making money. So that's why I said cash. I don't think you should take it from everybody, but I do think a little bit of feedback on your product, even though it can be hard to take, is really good in the long run. Nice. I'm working up a sweat filming this video. I'm just so passionate about bad business advice. <laughs> All right, so our next piece of advice is you should always offer your friends and family a discount. Trash. Bad advice. If there is anybody on this planet that would overpay and want you to succeed, it should be your friends and family. Yeah. Someone that really wants you to succeed, somebody that really wants to see your business take mm -hmm. off and for you to make money and for you to get what you want out of it, they should be willing to pay full price, if not a little more, and write you a review and share it with their friends on their own social media. And tell their friends about you and refer people your way. Your friends and family should be your biggest cheerleaders. Um, so I know we all feel the need to offer them a huge discount because they're close to us. But honestly, sometimes the friends and family don't even want a discount. They might feel a little funny taking a discount because they're like, hey, I just want to support you. Like, I'm here to help you oh. grow because I love you. So you might, we that actually, so many times. Yeah. you might actually be making them feel a little uncomfortable by trying to automatically just throw them a discount because they love you and they just want to help you grow. All right, this one I pulled off of the internet. <laughs> yeah? Yep. The internet gave you some good and or bad advertising advice? I don't know, we'll find we'll out. We'll find out. So the next piece of business advice is that you should spend a lot of money on advertising in order for it to work. Ooh. Ah, that's, mmm, ah. Yep. I'm gonna go with cash. Cash. Yeah. Cash. And here's why. Advertising, just general advertising in the form of like social media ads, Google ads, anything like that, yes. A billboard, newspaper. You need to spend a lot of money for it to work. 
Um, if you don't throw quite a bit of money at your social media ads or your Google ads or anything like that. Well, I, let me just give a real example. So like if you spend, if you're doing Google ads, Google search ads, and you spend any less than a thousand dollars a month, it's a waste of your time and a waste of your money. If you do any less than a thousand dollars a month, it's not worth, it's not worth pursuing. So we always say you can make a thousand dollars on accident. You can make $10,000 with some encouragement. You make a hundred thousand dollars with hard work, but you make a million dollars when you have the right skills. Advertising is a hard skill that you have to learn in order to make your first million dollars. But if you haven't made $10,000, if you haven't made a thousand, if you haven't made a hundred thousand dollars, advertising is not a game that you want to start playing because it, it's kind of like if you have $20 and you go to Vegas, you don't want to sit down at the high rollers table. You're just going to blow your money. Right. You know, once you've made some money, then you can go gamble at the high rollers table. But when you're first starting out, advertising is not a game that you want to play. You want to do the free avenues first. You want to get word of mouth going, test your product, get customer feedback, make your own social media content. That's a way you can talk to a bunch of people for free. And advertising takes so much practice. It's, it's you know, you have to do a lot of trial and error to see what works for your customer base. And you don't necessarily want to waste a lot of money figuring out what doesn't work. You want to do a lot of the free avenues at first so you can find out what works and then you can take what works and drop a little bit of money on it later right. on. Yeah. So yeah, you got to spend a lot of money on advertising for it to work, but there are free ways to advertise. So you don't need to spend any money on them. You just got to do work. Just it, at scale, you're looking for a quarter of a percent conversion rate mm -hmm. and you have to do it to the thousands before you can start to generate sales and, and make money. So um, if you're trying to promote your listing on your Etsy store, if you're trying to run a Facebook ad or something like that, if, if you're spending any less than $1,000 a month, I think your best efforts are spent on organic advertising, yes. word of mouth, introducing yourself to people, getting known the old fashioned way or and, the free way. And that's why we talk about if you're on your way to making your first 10K, try out the free methods of advertising because the other ones, well, good. And one day, you know, when you have the budget, you can allocate it there for paid ads, but try the free ones when you're first mm -hmm. starting out because they work insanely well and you're not losing a bunch of capital from the get go. So this is things like social media, posting on your Instagram, your Facebook, your TikTok, whatever platform you may be using and just talking to people. When you meet people, tell them you run a business. Get some word of mouth advertising going for you. That costs you nothing. All right, are you ready? Drum roll, please. This is the very last piece of business advice that we are gonna vote on. Okay. Is it cash or is it trash? In your business, you should save money and do everything yourself. Mm. Save money. This is a tough one. By doing everything yourself. I know a lot of these have been really tough. I'm. I'm gonna say cash. I'm gonna say trash. Ooh. Okay. I'll go first. Go for it. So save money, do everything yourself. I have no problem paying someone to do something, but I will, I need to know what it is I'm paying them to do. I have to take responsibility for what it is that they're doing. I'll give a quick example. Earlier this year, um, we had some employees and for a brief period of time, we had no employees. Well, we were using QuickBooks Payroll. Um, this is not a plug, not a sponsor or anything, but like we were using QuickBooks Payroll and it was great, but I didn't know what tax forms they were filing every month. I didn't understand how much they were withholding from taxes. They just did it all for me. Mm -hmm. Well, then when we didn't have employees for a little bit, we had some tax forms due and QuickBooks wasn't filing them for us. And because I had no idea, I completely outsourced that to QuickBooks. We got in a bind because the IRS didn't get some paperwork from us. So I think that not necessarily because you save money, but because you need to take responsibility for everything your business does when you first start. I don't think you should outsource things just because you don't want to do them or because they're difficult or hard. I think you should learn how to do it at a base level first. And then once you have some money, you can spend and, and pay for somebody else to do it for you. Yeah. But I, I do not advocate for um, immediately outsourcing the parts of a business that you don't want to do. Yeah. And I guess that's, I agree with that as a precursor to, to mine. Like I do believe you should learn how to do everything first and have a base understanding so that if you have to fix it yourself, you more or less know how. But once you get past that point where you understand how it works, 
don't feel bad about outsourcing things that you don't have super high confidence in yourself being able to consistently do. For example, for the first year that we ran our business, I did all of the bookkeeping and keeping track of the numbers and the money and the sales tax for each quarter and everything like that. And it was good, but at the end of that year, it started to really become a burden. I was so busy and it was to the point where I would have to stop my sales process for a day, a whole day, just to go back and manage the bookkeeping and everything like that and make sure the numbers tied out. And I ended up losing more money bookkeeping than I would have made had I used that day talking to people and selling my product. So- Oh, I get what you're saying. So like sometimes you can make more money by spending a little bit of money on some, oh, like a CPA, yeah. Yes, like a CPA or a bookkeeper. If bookkeeping is bogging you down to the point where it's inhibiting you from making more money or growing your business, I say do not feel bad for handing it off. That's but fair. you are correct. You gotta understand how to do the basics at least. Yeah. Wow, this has been a lot of fun. Give yourself a pat on the back for helping us come up with this video idea. Because you guys DM us and tell us stories about your businesses, uh, that's how we know that like we all get the same bad advice yeah. from the same people. Even though we feel isolated as business owners and we feel like we're all alone and there's nobody to help us. I mean, don't get me wrong, running a business is a lot of fun, but it's a pretty lonely journey. But that's why we're here to make content and get more people uh, on the party wagon for us to have fun together. We believe that any maker can make $10,000 with an idea and a little bit of encouragement. So hit subscribe if you want us to cheer you on and share this video with a friend to make it more fun.